In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful. All praise is due to Allah. And we send our salutations and the blessing of Allah upon the Prophet Muhammad and all the other prophets. Uh, we had started discussing the prophetic sayings from 287 to 293. They are all different narrations of the same saying, of the same hadith. And they bo basically bo all talk about the second coming of Isa, the son of Mary. Nuzul Isa ibn Maryam. Yesterday we, we read one of these hadith. And the summary is that um, the coming, second coming of Isa is one of those signs that Allah has set before the coming of the hour. Before the start of the hour, it was it one of it is one of those major signs that happen uh, shortly before the end of time, um, and Allah says about this in the Quran. After talking about Isa ibn Maryam, He says, uh, that Isa, Jesus, ibn Maryam, the son of Mary, is one of the signs of the of the hour, uh, <clears throat> and He will come at the same time where the false messiah will also appear, al-Masih al-Dajjal. And he will be the one to kill the false messiah. Um, one of the things he will do is that he will, uh, he will correct the faith of all those people who uh, went astray with regards to who he was. Some people considered him to be the son of God. Some of, his, some of them considered him to be God or equal to God. Um, and Many people considered that he was cru crucified. Um, so he will come and correct all these false beliefs. And um, everyone who uh, belongs to the previous uh, books, belongs to the previous scriptures, people of the book, they will end up believing him before he dies. During that time where he lives again, that 40, 40 years where he lives, all this will happen. Allah says about this, وَإِمِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ they will, not, they will not be left a single person from the people of the book except that he will believe in Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, son of Mary, as a prophet and messenger of Allah before he dies on this second mission of his. And he will also correct all the false practices uh, with regards to Sharia. Ah. Because, as you know, uh, when Isa lived, he followed the Jewish law because he was born as a Jew and he followed the law of Moses all his life until he died. But then after, not died, until he was, uh, I've talked about, about his rising to the heavens in a minute here. Uh, when he was risen to the heaven, um, after that, by about maybe 30 years or so, uh, another man called Paul of Tarsus, he claimed to be inspired by Jesus, by Isa, that he saw him in a vision as he was walking in a desert, and that this man named Paul, who was also a Jew initially, he uh, says that Jesus inspired him to spread the message of Jesus. That's after the death, by many years. But he did not really spread the same message that Jesus lived by or taught. He spread a totally different message where he actually completely went against all the law that uh, Moses and all the prophets that followed Moses had followed. He abolished the law, despite the fact that Jesus, one of the main uh, statements that he made, which is still in the Bible, till today, he says, I did not come to abolish the messengers or the law, I came to fulfill them. So he made it very clear that he is only, he will only complement the previous prophets and he will continue to establish the law. Paul, on the contrary, he totally canceled the law and he made it lawful for his followers to uh, practice things that were originally forbidden upon the Jews and forbidden upon, uh, upon Isa ibn Maryam himself. And one of them is eating swine, eating pork. And that is why he, he will forbid that. That could be a symbol that he will correct the Sharia ah that was also distorted. So number one, he will correct the belief by, uh, he says, يَكْسِرُ salib. The crucifixion, he will correct that false belief. He was not crucified. And because they believe that he was crucified and they believe that because of his crucifixion, all their sins are forgiven. All the sins of humanity were put on his back 
and he suffered on behalf of humanity, and now everybody can do whatever they will. That's, that's the belief, by the way. This is how they believe, and that's why there is no, there's no clear prohibition in the Christian religion today. Because of that thing. Because Paul said to them that he took all the sins of humanity and went away with them by his suffering on the cross. So Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus, son of Mary, will correct that false belief. Yaksiru uh, salib. And he will also correct all the false Sharia practices, all the distortion of the Sharia, al-Khinzir. And you can see here that he will start with the Aqidah and then the Sharia. And that's how it should be. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what did he do in Mecca? He taught the people the Aqidah, the belief, for so many years before the Sharia came down. Before the Sharia came down. Same. Wa yada'ul jizya. We talked about yada'ul jizya means that everybody will believe at the time when he comes, because, because uh, his second coming is a miracle. It's a sign of the hour. People will now realize, uh, uh, the, uh, realize that the hour is near and that the, uh, all the false beliefs will be abolished. So people will enter the religion and everybody will be in peace. That is why there will be no more jizya. Jizya is the tax that is imposed upon non-Muslims who seek the protection of the Muslim, uh, uh, Muslim uh, authority. Uh, while the Muslims pay the zakah, the non-Muslims pay jizya. Actually, there will be no need for jizya or zakah. You can see right here that there will be so much wealth that nobody needs to take anything. So look at this. jizya, mal hatta ahad. There will be so much plenty of wealth that there is nobody to give give zakah or charity or sadaqah. So there is no point in collecting jizya or zakah. You will see in some other hadith, uh, he says. القلاص القلاص is uh, the, the, the most expensive form of camels. And uh, they had the highest rate on, in zakah. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says that nobody will go and collect the zakah on the, the most expensive camels anymore. And this is a sign that no zakah will be collected from anybody. There's no point. There's nobody, nobody needing any money anymore. And he will act as a ruler. The word muqsit, hakaman muqsitan. Muqsit means just fair. Uh, there's two words I would like to, to know the difference between. There's muqsit and qasit. They're the total opposite. They come from the same root, but they're the total opposite. If you want to say somebody is fair, you say muqsit. If you, say, you want to say somebody who is unjust, uh, you say qasit. I'll give you one verse for each one. Allah says, وَأَقَصِتُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُقْصِطِينَ Be fair, for Allah loves those who are fair and just. But the other, the qasit, وَأَمَّا الْقَاسِطُونَ فَكَانُوا لِجَهَنَّمَ حَطَبَ Those who deviate away from the path of justice, فَكَانُوا لِجَهَنَّمَ حَطَبَ They will be used as fuel for the fire of hell. So you have to know the difference between muqsit and qasit. Now, and finally, I'll mention what I'll finally mention today is وَحَتَى تَكُونَ السَّجْدَةُ الْوَاحِدَةَ خَيْرًا مِّنَ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا فِيهَا The one sujood, sujood here could mean sajda, could mean a full rak'ah. It will be more beloved to the people than the whole world and whatever wealth it contains. And scholars say this is because people at that time will realize that the hour is so near and they will realize how precious and valuable the good deeds are. Uh, that they will, uh, if you give them the whole world, take all this wealth, uh, or go and do two rakat, say, no, go, go to, 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 to rakat, I don't want all this, subhanAllah, to this extent. And also because the wealth is predominant anymore, and uh, they say that the best, the best kind of act of worship at the time will be dhikr and salah, because people are not in need anymore. So people will focus on their, on their salah. And finally, uh, I said finally multiple times, sorry. <laughs> but I haven't exceeded 10 minutes, okay. <laughs> I mentioned that verse. I'll mention one more verse before we uh, conclude this. Uh, the verse is, وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيَّ وَمُطَهِرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَجَاعِلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوكَ فَوْقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يَوْمَ قِيَامَةِ Let me mention this verse quickly. When Allah said to Isa ibn Maryam, uh, before, before he take, took him to the heavens, Ya Isa, inni mutawafika. Mutawafika could have more than one meaning. Wafa in the Quran could mean death or could also mean sleep. 
Allah says, Allah yatawaffal anfusa hina mawtiha wallati lam tamud fi manamiha. So Allah talks about two kinds of wafa. Wafa in Arabic means death. Okay? To, to retrieve. This is, this is the, the, the root or the Arabic uh, meaning, uh, linguistic meaning is to retrieve in full. To retrieve. Wafahu daynahu means he gave him back his debt in full. To retrieve in full is called wafa. So in the Quran, Allah used the wafa to mean the actual death. Allah yatawaffal anfus. Allah retrieves the soul, take them back. When, it, when the time of death comes. And Allah also takes the souls during sleep. So the wafa, also Allah says, He does wafa to you. He takes your souls at night and he knows what you do during the day. This is the meaning of this other verse. So here, uh, uh, I will raise you to me. وَمُطَهِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And I will protect you uh, from those disbelievers who aimed at hurting you and killing you. So this is the meaning. مُتَوَفِّكَ could mean that uh, Allah made him sleep. So he died because they tried to capture him and apprehend him. It's a stressful situation, right? And they want to crucify him. So Allah said, I will, uh, I will, I will make you sleep so he doesn't even notice or feel any of this stuff. And he will take him to the heaven and he will protect him from getting killed. All this is mentioned. But uh, another tafsir of this, another explanation is that some scholars said this is, this is the real wafa. Subhanallah, this is, this is the saying of Ibn Abbas and Wahb ibn Munabbih. And actually I was surprised. I read this today and I was surprised because I've never read it before. You can read it in the tafsir of Tahrir al-Tanweer. He said that Ibn Abbas says he actually made him to die made him die and took him to the heaven. Uh, and then his second coming is actually a second life for him. It is a second life for him. And this, there are some narrations that are in, in which Allah says, in, in which the Messenger وسلم, says, يَبْعَثُ اللَّهُ عِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ حَكَمًا عَدْلًا يَبْعَث in Arabic means resurrect. So maybe this, so you could understand it as Allah made him, you know, lose contact with reality like sleep or made him unconscious. Or it could mean that he actually made him to die. There's nothing wrong with him, Allah taking his soul and giving the soul back. This has happened with other people, right? In Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah took his life for 100 years and gave it back. There's no, nothing wrong with that. So uh, it could mean that Allah took actually his life totally uh, in a normal kind of death rather than being killed. And then he will uh, resurrect him and send him again. We'll stop here.